cute little cute little cheeky little monkey. I think the best thing is that the lady gets a hand baggage. We've got clearance for security. Take a hand baggage off and uh, stay with the um, stay with the dog. I want to be pushed back in eight minutes to uh, try and get this slot. Or else we're talking about another okay. hour and a half. Flight 157 is finally ready to depart, but just before pushback, there's another problem. They've left their passport and ticket behind. I think I don't know now. <laughs> it just gets worse. For safekeeping, all the family's travel documents are in the mum's handbag, but her family can't travel without their passports. They don't need the tickets, that's all they need. Oh, they've got Have the passports. Have you got your own One of those is Lulu's. Do they need the tickets or do I? I'll just give them that. Okay, that's fine, you need your passport. I've got my passport. I've, I've got the tickets. They haven't, they don't have to. Flight 157 can at last push back. Hopefully the mum, baby and dog will be flying tomorrow. Now, how are we doing with the rain? I'm sure that's coming down a bit harder now. Might need to do brollies. At least it's not too wet on the floor. It's not just the rain that's worrying Anita. The Italian delegation hasn't arrived. I suppose they're not here by now, actually. Maybe the traffic's bad because of the weather. Back at the animal reception center, Stuart hopes to confirm his suspicions about the size of the dog box. Okay, we've got a 16 elbow. Natural, please, mate. He's talking about 36, 37, was it? About 37. Uh, now, the length. That's about right. 42. And. 7 wide. It's not a very wide, dog, sir. So. It's about 7. Yeah. Blimey. Uh, the result was it was eight inches out in the length and it was five inches out in the height. So it was quite a big deal. So what a lot of people don't actually do is they don't think about the elbow. So what you should do, you should measure from floor to the elbow and half that elbow measurement then you add that onto length of the dog. You know, Bertie. And that should be the length of the box you want. For a seven hour flight to Q8, I think that would be pretty bad for the poor dog because he'd have to lay down the whole time it can't lay down in a natural position anyway, because it's eight inches out in the length. So it'll be really cramped. It's like a uh, flying economy class. There's a medical emergency in zone A of terminal three departures. Have you got somebody collapsed here? No, 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 this is his gentleman. So nay, did anybody collapse? Having difficulty breathing? So nay, have you called an ambulance? Well, I have called an ambulance, yeah. To this young gentleman, yeah. did he actually collapse? Um, we don't know, we weren't with him at the time. He's right. not very well, he's a bit dizzy. Right. It's a 15-year-old travelling alone. I'm Karen. Where are you travelling to? Los Angeles. To Los Angeles, and you're travelling alone, yeah? And are you going out to Los Angeles? What is that? Going yeah, back home? You live in Los Angeles. Have you got your passport on you, John? That I could take your details. Do you want your bag? It's in my bag. Yeah. Uh, it's still raining, so uh, it's definitely brollies, I think. Now they better be Heathrow brollies, I suppose. Probably is on standby. Weather contingency plans in place, Anita has a niggling worry. Still no Italians. They are cutting it a bit fine. Where have you come in from, John? Uh, I've been 
safe bins on the bin. Right, right. Right, like myself. <laughs> this is John's second attempt to fly home. Only yesterday he'd been on a flight to California, but became so ill it was serious enough for the plane to divert to Ireland so he could be taken to hospital. He's only just got back to Heathrow and was hoping to be well enough to fly home. He's saying that he still feels dizzy and unwell, so as a matter of precaution, we need to get, get the medics here just to check him out and possibly take him back to hospital. Medic 5, Medic 5 from Oscar 2. Yeah, Medic 5, be advised, I'm on site with the patient in Zone A Alpha, 15-year-old boy who is conscious and breathing and sitting up and can talk. Ah, must be the Italians. Does he look Italian? Hello, sir. Welcome to the Royal Suite. Going down to the air. Very nice to see you, sir. Sir Peter, this is, uh, can I introduce Minister Antonio, Antonio D'Andrea from the Italian Embassy? Good morning, sir. <laughs> May I take your coat, sir? Hello. So, Hello. I'll take it. Right. Good. We have the Italians. Would you like to take a seat, sir, and I'll ask the catering manager to come see to you. The Queen's entourage has been spotted heading for the entrance to the royal suite. Prior to the royal arrival, all departure formalities have been completed. All that remains is for the dignitaries to bid Her Majesty a formal farewell before the royal party can board the aircraft. Anita's familiar with such royal departures, but there's always a tense moment nonetheless. Great, on time. Listen, you might be interested to know he spent last night in the hospital in Shannon. The aircraft diverted to Shannon last night because he was dizzy and he's asthmatic. This is from hospital, if you want to read the notes at all. How are you feeling now? Is he just eating a bit hard to ventilate? Not, not while I've been with him, no. The paramedics are trying to establish what has caused his dizziness. During the preliminary checks, they give him something to ease his breathing. Is this just oxygen or is it something for the asthma? Selbutamin. for the asthma. Blug, blug, blug. Okay. It could be some time before John's well enough to fly home. The Royal Flight is ready to depart. Very nice to see you, Highness. And it stopped raining. We were worried earlier. But, uh... The Queen's four-day visit to Italy will consist of a full schedule in both Rome and Milan. She'll be accompanied by her ladies-in-waiting, her private and press secretaries, and other officials. In order for the Queen's flight to depart as quickly as possible, it's been granted a special concession from air traffic control. They're actually taxiing along this runway, and they're going to actually take off from the landing runway. The two main runways at Heathrow alternate daily 